from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Thursday, July the 6th, 2017. The IDF uncovered and seized a stockpile of weapons in the West Bank. During an operation overnight last night, the IDF, together with the Shin Bet, Israel Border Police, and Israel Police, uncovered two illegal firearm manufacturing workshops and sealed them off, also confiscating a large amount of weapons in the Palestinian village of Aram, northeast of Jerusalem. Over a dozen Palestinian terror suspects were also arrested overnight. The World Heritage Council of UNESCO, the United Nations Cultural Agency, voted this week against Israel's sovereignty and actions in Jerusalem. The Jordanian-sponsored resolution was adopted on Tuesday at a meeting of the Council in Poland. It calls Israel the, quote, occupying power and condemns Israel for actions such as excavations in Jerusalem. Israel's foreign ministry said in response that Jerusalem is the eternal capital of the Jewish people and no UNESCO decision can change that. Israel's ambassador to the UN, Danny Danon, called the vote disgraceful. He said no faux heritage committee can sever the bonds between our people and Jerusalem. And Jewish groups here in the United States condemned the resolution. The leaders of the Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations, Chairman Stephen Greenberg and Executive Vice Chairman and CEO Malcolm Honline, wrote a letter to the chairperson of the World Heritage Committee just ahead of the vote, urging him to refrain from, quote, adopting another offensive, biased resolution that inflicts a grave injustice against the Jewish people, history, and faith as well as the Christian heritage of the holy sites in Israel. Tomorrow, UNESCO will consider a Palestinian motion to designate the old city of Hebron as a world heritage site in danger and denying the Jewish connection to that city, which includes the tomb of the patriarchs. CEO of the World Jewish Congress, Robert Singer, said of the Jerusalem vote earlier this week and tomorrow's Hebron vote, these are manipulative and cynical distortions of reality and a clear attack on Israel and its right to self-determination. He said the dangerous implications of these motions on both a political and religious level cannot be understated. Jews, Christians, Muslims, and Buddhists came together in Kielce, Poland to remember 37 Jews who, after surviving the Holocaust, were murdered. The Kielce pogrom took place on July the 4th of 1946, carried out by Polish soldiers, police officers and civilians, whose violent attack was apparently spurred by false rumors about their Jewish neighbors. The special ceremony was organized by the Jan Karski Society. The U.S. Navy and the Israeli Navy signed an agreement last week to launch the first ever cadet exchange program. The agreement was signed during an official visit to the U.S. by IDF Major General Eli Sharvit and U.S. Naval Admiral John Richardson. Beginning in January of next year, Israeli cadets will be sent to the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland, and American cadets will be sent to the IDF's Navy Officers Course in Israel. IDF Naval Commander Lieutenant Colonel Eli Socholitsky said this is another example of the long-lasting collaboration between the United States and Israel. Israeli business Daily Globes reported that Israeli cybersecurity firm Fireglass was bought by Symantec. The international cybersecurity giant will reportedly pay $250 million for the Tel Aviv-based company, which has developed isolation technology to help protect against cyber threats. And turning now to some sports news, Israeli tennis player Dudi Sela has advanced to the third round at Wimbledon. Sela surprisingly beat American John Eisner today and will next face Bulgarian Grigor Dimitrov on Saturday. Omri Kaspi, the first Israeli to play in the National Basketball Association, just signed a one-season contract with NBA champs, the Golden State Warriors, out of Oakland, California. And in Israel, a record-breaking 10,000 athletes from 85 countries are taking part in the 20th Maccabiah Games. Sometimes referred to as the Jewish Olympics, the Games open tonight in Jerusalem with some 45 sporting competitions. The Maccabiah Games are reportedly now the third largest sporting event in the world.
Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Thursday, July the 6th at 7 o'clock, it's Talmud Study with Rabbi Mordechai Becker. At 7.30, a panel discussion on the strengths and weaknesses of American Jewry today from Bethel Synagogue of New Rochelle. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with author Tuvia Tenenbaum on L'Chaim. And at 10, Israeli director David Fisher talks about the final film in his trilogy, Six Million and One, with Judy Gelman Myers on New Jewish Cinema. And coming up right after this newscast tonight at 6.30, in the news with Mark Golub, who tonight speaks with Jerry Silverman of the Jewish Federations of North America, who talks about the Netanyahu government's refusing to implement the compromise at the Western Wall, and explains why he chose to meet with the Israeli Prime Minister when other American Jewish leaders would not. That's on tonight's In the News. And that's the JBS News Update for Thursday, July the 6th, 2017. I'm Tisha Bader.